that there was a party at Clyde Davis's house, and that's where the story began. Clyde Davis's house. He revealed uh, his family. Um, they did it with understanding and support and warmth, and um, it really impressed me and continues to impress me. As far as myself is concerned, I was totally straight uh, until through my second marriage. I've got four kids and grandkids. Um, I opened up myself after the failure of my second marriage, never having had anything for the man to see, could I be attracted to the person and not the gender? And I did find that I could be attracted uh, to a man. Y'all want me to talk about Clive Davis? Okay, let's do it. But I'm telling y'all right now, this story already took a turn that I was not expecting. So Clive Davis is over Arista, which is over Diddy's bad boy record. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how bad boy records. Power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was? Andre Lavelle. Tell, tell us how was he was mentored by Clyde Davis. A new lawsuit just came out that shows tons of evidence that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, has been running a sexual blackmail operation very much like Jeffrey Epstein, but in the rap and music industry for basically 30 years. And in that lawsuit, we learned that his head of security while he's running the sexual blackmail ring is this guy named Fahim Muhammad, who before working for Diddy was the head of security for Michael Jackson when he was only 20. Puff and Tupac was like a couple, seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? His rapper and him, they all in the room. Clive Davis, a towering figure in the music industry, has just made a revelation that no one saw coming. In the lawsuit, he implied that Meek Mill and Usher were part of these freak offs that uh, he's so infamous for. It's, let me ask you, is this still doubtable at this point that Diddy is, you know? Ah, uh, listen, until I see it, I'm not going to say that it happened. Man, listen. Listen, there's been lots of, I mean, in fact, this one dude, you know, fat Jewish, you know who that guy no. is? It's this like Jewish comedian guy. He went to this whole story and th this story has been kind of popping up again, but he was saying he's at this, he was at this one house party and it was a super, super high end. He wasn't even sure how he even got in there, but as he was walking around, I think he was trying to find the bathroom and he walked in into a room and it was Diddy and this gay DJ named Felix the house cat. And they were like spooning according to him. And he said that Diddy saw him and their eyes kind of locked and they tried to get him to say that he was joking or whatever else, but he kind of keeps saying the story over and over again. And uh, I looked up, I mean, Felix the house cat is an openly gay DJ. You know, that part is established. I don't know. I'm not gonna say it happened. I'm gonna say it didn't happen. I wasn't there. I've never had any sort of gay experiences with Diddy. There's just too many clues, brother. Remember Wendy Williams got kicked off the radio for that? Yeah. When she yeah. brought up and said that there's some, you know, she has some sort of gay proof, Puffy called and said, you either get rid of her or I'm suing. They got rid of her. But that was probably at the apex of Puff's powers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. These are my Whitney, uh, Wendy from the radio show yes. days. Before yeah. she went on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she had to go to Philly because of that. Yeah. Now, I remember when I interviewed her, yeah. she kind of alluded to that. She said, right. I was burned at the stake for that. Now look. Rah, 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 rah. Right. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career, and um, it's all coming full circle now. So. Listen, I don't know. I don't know. Is, is Fluffy gay or bisexual? I don't know. I've never been there. I've never been right. there. If it looked like a gay club, smelled like a gay club, it's probably a gay club. <laughs> but there's a story I've recently been telling about Diddy. Uh, I said it on Drink Champs for the first time. Me and Faze on Love kind of had a little laugh fest when I brought this up. I was at a club. This was years ago. This was maybe 2006 or so. 
the time I was a broke DJ, so when you're broke, you kind of depend on merch. Mm -hmm. You know, these companies giving you free clothes, you know, so you could look kind of fresh without having to spend a lot of money. And there's this company named Stalin Dean. They did these uh, really dope throwbacks uh, with teams that didn't exist anymore. So right. they're running this whole kind of series with these old Negro League teams. Right. And there was a team called the Brown Bombers. Right. And my man Rikers, who, who worked there, you know, was, was really, really cool with me. So he gave me this Brown Bombers jacket with a matching hat. And it was like, I, I was feeling myself. I'm like, okay, like no one else has this. Like, yo, I'm about to go hit the club with this. So I was out in the club and Puffy was in the club as well. And this guy approached me and he was like, yo, man, I work for Puffy. Oh, okay, cool, what's up? He goes, hey man, um, Puffy really likes that jacket you're wearing. Take that, take that. <laughs> He's wondering if you want to sell it to him. You had to pay him in dick. <laughs> I said, no, man, I'm not gonna sell much. Are you sure? Cause it's gonna be some money, I said. Nah, man, I'm cool. And honestly, having another man offer to buy my jacket off me is really kind of weird. <laughs> if you ask me, nah, I'm cool. No thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be, hold up now. I'm a, objection. Uh, I don't see that as a weird thing. Listen, if you a rich motherfucker and you go, yo, that fucking jacket hot. And you go, I'll give you $5,000 for a jacket that probably costs maybe half that, if that. You wouldn't sell it and that make him gay? I didn't say he was gay by saying that. And okay, no point well, did I, I say But why do you find that weird? Because one thing about rich motherfuckers, they used to getting what they want when they want. That's part of the power of being rich. I, I guess, I guess in retro, I just felt it was kind of disrespectful. I really? felt like. Disrespectful would have been if his boys he, beat you up and took the jacket. <laughs> right, he, he offered you money. He offered me money. I guess all he had to do was say, that's a dope jacket, where'd you get it? And then the next day he goes and gets that jacket. But maybe he doesn't want to go the next day. Maybe he wants to wear the motherfucker right, <laughs> right now. now. <laughs> and because it's a dope jacket and he's who he is, that adds to his dopeness. Yeah. I don't think that's weird at all. I thought it was weird. In a candid moment, he opened up about his gay affairs, shocking many and sending ripples through the industry. Wendy Williams, mm -hmm. she got fired from the radio in New York because she basically said she had seen some pictures of Puffy with some men and he basically called the radio station and said, you either fire her or I'm gonna sue you. So she got fired. Right. Um, there was a, this comedian named the Fat Jew who said that he walked into a party on Star Island and he saw Diddy spooning with this one gay DJ named Felix the House Cat. Yes, my man Felix. You yes. know Felix? Yes. Okay. Yes. Was there a relationship of any sort between Felix and Diddy? I can't say yes and I can't say no. I've never seen them do anything, but he was one of the in crowds. He was one of the in people with Diddy where uh, you had like certain people that were just Diddy friends. You know, we got to know them throughout time, but they would pop up at the parties in San Jose, pop up in the parties at Cannes. You know, these were just his personal friends. Hmm. So they would do ecstasy and everything else together. You know what I'm saying? It became a Felix stayed at the house and everything else like that. So I've never actually seen him do anything physical or anything like that, but I do know Felix well. Yeah, you know, and Felix is openly gay. Right. From what I understand. And I mean, this is where the gray area comes in. You, you don't know. You know, I've taken ecstasy before and you get real like, yo, I love you, man. Like you touch on, you know, right. you're not touching on dudes sexually, but you hugging them. I love you, man. You know, kiss right. them, you know, you know, like in the forehead or something, you right. know, and it's like at the time, it's just like, yo, man, you know, it's not a gay thing. Right. But it's just like you, you, you just get into a certain mood. Is Diddy gay? Is he bisexual? I personally don't know. These stories circulate. Hard to tell. I don't know. I've never seen anything gay. You've never seen anything gay. I don't know. But people say that if he just came out as bisexual, it'd actually help him out at this point. Uh, yeah, I, I felt the same way. You know, I, people always tell me, um, if you had to ask me, I would say he was definitely bisexual. Hmm. Um, but coming from Harlem, representing gangster rap at that time, yeah. it, it's not like 2024. You know what I'm saying? So I think that he was 
fighting that fact so much that for him to come out now, he felt like it would destroy everything that he built. Yeah. But I agree with you. I've, I felt like that he should have just said exactly what it was back then. Because the question is now is not about whether you're gay or not. It's about domestic violence. Yeah. You know, the being the gay part is just something extra on there, something to spruce about. But it's the part that to hide these things, you, you're beating people, you're beating women, you're doing all type of things to hide these things. Yeah, I remember I joked around about, you know, I wonder who's going to be the first uh, friend of Diddy who accidentally says no Diddy. Clive's admission was more than just a personal disclosure. It was a powerful statement. Did he have Whitney killed? Where my bill You already at? seen my nails. Where my bill <laughs> This is what I'm going to say about that whole situation, because for me, so many people don't want to say anything because it's Clive. Personally, me, I really don't give a fuck. They said I was blackballed. I can't be no more blackballed than I am. Clive Davis sure. knows exactly who I am. I know exactly who he is. The last time I went to a party at his house, my ex-husband was with me and a nigga hit on my husband in front of me, yo. Like he I walks around If No, on my husband, on my ex-husband. Oh, Okay, okay, okay. Awesome. Which was, you know, it's his type. Everybody know Clive wants to be a black woman. What? That's why he always surrounds himself with black women. Look at his roster of major stars. Aretha Franklin, Sissy Houston, Whitney Houston, Angie Stone. Wow. And everybody forgets about Angie Stone. True. We kind of do. That's true. Everybody forget that before Alicia Keys, Angie Stone was holding it down. Gold record at the gold record at the gold record at the gold record. And then the next thing you know, Alicia Keys come. So you tell, okay, so I, I do know, because I, I heard about it like in his biography or whatever, Clive Davis did say that he's bisexual, but you telling me like, like no, he really, he's like in a queen. Opinion, he's a queen. He's a queen. Okay. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Most queens want to be black women. So he's like a yes type, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On the low. Wow. But you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna bite my words. The nigga hit on my husband right in my face. I was like, you gotta be a fucking mind. So, you know, I didn't get a whole lot of invitations back to none of them um, come suckle at the tea to power Grammy parties the night before the Grammys. Yeah. What I will say about Clive is, is that he is very, very, very obsessed with maintaining the brands that he creates. And he will go to extreme lengths to protect those brands. You know, these these, these women that he works with, they become um, dolls in his mind. They're living dolls. He runs every second of their lives. The only person he never really did that with was Aretha Franklin, but that was a different time. Right. He needed Aretha Franklin to become Clyde Davis. So he was a little bit more humble back then. Well, I mean, you ain't got no choice. You ain't got no choice. Everybody comes into the game having to make their bones. He made yeah. his bones with Aretha. And what a person to make your bones with. True. Aretha hit, now everyone's looking to him. Clyde knows the singers. Clive knows this. It wasn't Clive that knew the singers, it was Aretha that knew the singers, who introduced the singers to Clive. But they don't talk about that either. So you gotta realize by the time Clive took over managing Whitney, I mean, she he had been a part of her life, damn near all her life. He had his post on that bloodline, yo. Hey. By coming clean, he shattered long-held assumptions and challenged norms but not everyone was ready to accept this truth. And pitch, they could fill a whole church without microphones. See, that's singing, yo. That is. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. But everything that Whitney Houston is, she will bow down to Kim Clark. I mean, uh, Kara Clark. Kara Clark, she is, period. She would bow down. And oh Twinkie. My, oh, my God. Kara Clark, she, oh, my God. Y'all going to think I'm crazy. Is that... That's oh my Kira's God. mom. 
I I knew who Kiera was this whole time and didn't know who Kiera is your generation. Wow. Okay. But Kiera's grandma is Dr. Maddie Moss. Man, she was she was the the gospel gangster. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how they portrayed her. She was like no. She was, she was about her money, about her business. Listen to me, my husband told me, he was like, they didn't do it right in the movie. He was like, she would literally take her shoe off and throw it at you if you was off on a note. Damn. Oh, your mom and dad told you that? Yeah. Because they remember, because they sang. They sang in the choir. Yeah, in the state choir. And um, so, yeah, so it's like, you got to look at who Sissy Houston is. It, it, when it comes to that. Like there's nobody that's been able to go between the gospel world and the secular world, not just as a vocalist, not just as a choir director, not just as a musical director, not just at, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, sissy a beast. So if you that kind of beast, why wouldn't you defer to what your mom say? Cause you're gonna think, you, cause you're gonna feel like my mom knows what she's talking about. She's a legend. Yeah. yeah. And this is all before, now, if you go back and look at the movie and listen to the story, she was getting hooked on cocaine at that about that same time. Life was a whirlwind. And before she knew it, she was the biggest thing ever. I don't even think she knew she was gonna be that big. But Clive knew he had been planning it for quite some time. That Merv Griffin show, total setup. Okay. Total setup. For Merv, when she did the Merv Griffin, and then she did, uh, I think it was Johnny Carson, who was white America. Yes. Yes. If you were black on yeah. that show, oh, nigga, you, you Michael Jackson. Yeah. He was, he was that one. He, he had that, he had late night on lock. That's not, that's the true legend. Yeah, he was, he, he was David Letterman before David Letterman. Yes. So that's Whitney. And now her life is, Boom, and then and into whirlwind. She's constantly on tour. She barely has a chance to figure out what her personal life looks like, what she wants for herself, what's important to her. But then she has all of these demands: money, 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 money. I'm gonna tell you when I was done having any real respect for Clive Davis. When he made her end her marriage and separated that home. Mm. And Bobby Chris. Even though they were dysfunctional on so many different levels, they were still a family. He separated that family for optics. And guess what? I can go up on YouTube right now and pull up footage of, of that European tour. It was a shame. It was a disgrace. You go and look up YouTube, Whitney Houston in Kazakhstan. See, before she came back with the I look to you, mm -hmm. Clive sent her out on a world tour outside of America. Collect a bunch of cash. They was getting like two hundred and fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars a show. Wow. They were getting hell of a lot more than they would get here because this is Whitney Houston. And she had been gone for a while. And Clyde, was, oh, she's making a big comeback. And of course, if Clyde said it's got to be true. Right. His word <laughs> is law. Yeah. The show that she did in Kazakhstan, it was for the president. For the press, she was she was there to do the birthday performance for the president. She only had to do four or five songs. A half an hour, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. For a half an hour. And when I tell you she was so high, she started crip walking under under her gown. Oh. She was crip walking in a $15,000 gown on a $100,000 stage with the light up and the Kazakhstan wave dances. She couldn't even remember her songs. The background singers were stepping in. Like it was bad. Wow. It was bad. And then she did the whole Marilyn Monroe. And then she was cracking, her voice was, it, it was, I'm gonna put it to you this way, the first time I saw it, it made me cry. Really? Because I thought to myself, why the fuck would they put her out on the road like that if she wasn't prepared? If she wasn't ready, but see, she had to make that money, Clyde needed that money. 
yeah. just in case she crashed and burned before they could do a U.S. tour. And she embarrassed him. The news spread. The reactions varied, but one person in particular couldn't contain his emotions. Diddy, known for his close ties to Clive, was blindsided by the confession. The tension in his camp started to rise. On him for getting money. Me either. I'm just hating on the way he got it. And I'm hating on the overall effect of what it's done to not only the artist on his label, the artist that got shelved, the artist that got dropped, not, not only that, but what he did to culture. Because he made culture like an Andy Warhol painting. And don't get me wrong, Andy Warhol, great artist. Right. But let's keep it a bean. Andy Warhol was pop culture. That's what I, if I were to put a label on Puff, I would say that he's the Andy Warhol of hip hop. The Andy Warhol, okay, okay. I hear you, I hear um, you. And he got smart and he listened to all of his advisors, mostly Clive Davis, and he won. Like he was determined to win. Like nobody knew how determined he was to win. Like that whole thing with Father MC, he covered that thing real fast. What happened with him at Father MC? There was a party um, down at Howard, you know, one of the infamous parties and they had gotten too big and he didn't have proper security, he didn't have proper permits and there was a stampede and Father MC's woman got uh, trampled to death. Oh, wow. Wow. And now, how, uh, do, how does one go about covering up something like that? Well, I mean, a, a, apparently you pay people. From what I've been told, he's been paying, um, what is it? What's the, the not the world star, the other one. The, 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 uh, the, the, the shade room. Mm. He's been paying the shade room not to post my post. That's what I was told. Uh, Someone hit me up in the DM and was like, the, stop tagging. So they got on my feet and was like, stop tagging the shade room. He's paying them not to post it. Yeah, I can believe that. It's a couple other artists that pay them too, not to, yep. I'm well, not I mean, yeah. and I'm not hating. I'm not hating. If they paying you that money, they paying you that money. But just understand, the second that you jump into somebody's pocket, you stay in their pocket. Forever. Period. Yeah. Because if you'll take the money once, you'll take the money twice. If you'll take the money twice, you'll take the money three times. You know, and once they get used to getting that money, now you've given the other person all of the control. So what happens when you want to break a story that you really want to break and somebody comes to pay it, but everybody else is going viral and you're missing the boat. Yeah. And, and right now we're talking about the shade room and Diddy. Allegedly Diddy has paid the shade room not to repost Jaguar's post. I can tell you guys, I know for a fact, there's a couple other artists that paid the shade room to only post positive things. Hey, you, you get your money how you do. Allegedly, some YouTubers are being paid too to only post positive things. That's fine. You get it how you do. You I like it. Money, money. I am a hustler. I would never tell nobody not to get no money. Right. Me either. But at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself what you're living for. Are you living for what you're building for yourself? What you're building for your career? What you're building for your legacy? Are you living to be in somebody's pocket? Yeah. Yeah, you can be of the Pump has always had a lot of people in his pocket. Yeah. Like I said in my post, he's probably he, he's probably one of the only people in this industry that has more secrets than me. Really? Yeah. All those cover-ups, all of those stories. Like the simple fact that people still didn't know that the East Coast, West Coast was engineered by him and Suge. They did a great job acting that whole thing out. But it was all to sell records. It was a marketing scheme. And then when they start, you know, when, when people started losing control of the stars, next thing you know, people started disappearing. Now, a bunch of people have gotten on my page and asked me, do I know who killed Biggie and Tupac? What hey. I will say about that is, is this. Allegedly, everybody knows. Oh. Allegedly. Everybody knows, but nobody's going to say anything. But do you know? <laughs> what I will say is, is this. When you start bumping into certain groups and entourages of people, and you see key players that are there sometimes and not there sometimes, you know what I'm saying? When yeah. they're there, 
ain't nothing popping, but when they're not there, things are popping. You feel what I'm saying? I'm following. You know, there, there are certain people that hang out with certain groups of people and you see them, they're in pictures, they're on the red carpet, they're around, but then things start popping off. You don't see those people. Oh. They're not in those pictures. They're not on the red carpet. They're nowhere around. So where the hell were they? They were at every other party. They're in every other picture. They're standing by you everywhere else, except for when this person got miss went missing or this person got shot. Ah. You know, um, the art of misdirection is a skill that most record executives use. So considering that the public has absolutely no idea what's happening behind the curtain or behind the velvet rope, it gives them a great advantage to paint whatever story they want to paint. So what I will say is there are some peanut gallery attendees. Okay. That conveniently disappear off the scene at certain times. And everyone knows this. Now I'm not speaking on anyone in particular. I'm just saying, we gotta pay more attention to the people that show up in pitches when they show up and when they don't show up. Cause oh. Diddy, who has always maintained a strong public image, was not prepared for this. The confession hit him hard and behind closed doors, his frustration was palpable. He wasn't just surprised he was losing control. Funny. But y'all know who this guy is? And you didn't catch what I asked you. Who is this guy? So this guy is a dude that's uh, S Santana, Saucy, or S Saucy Santana. If y'all know anything about him, and he claps back, so trust me, he gonna clap back if I ask, but I don't care. Y'all know what he is, right? Y'all can look at him and tell what he is, right? But Saucy Santana, Number one, I'm so disappointed in L.A., man. I wouldn't believe that L.A. people would be out there supporting him at a concert at BET ex Experience. But I guess that's the era we in now. I thought that was some shit for Atlanta. <laughs> or Frisco or some shit like that. You niggas in D.C. I didn't know we was like that. Maybe West Hollywood, but you know, they only like the white boys. They don't like no big black dudes like that. But, oh. Um, that's, that person, people that's deep into this internet stuff really knows, but a lot of y'all don't know, like John don't know. That's young Miami best friend, y'all. Young Miami best friend. <laughs> so we know about Puffy now, right? And we know Puffy like to use and have friends around and you know, of, of his girlfriends that are like to do, go both ways, right? I bet y'all a million dollars that this nigga was the one that was fucking on Puffy Combs, y'all. This is Puffy Combs, bitch. Young Miami, who is his best friend, who always with him, that is a cover. That nigga right there, this person right here, that's who y'all boy Diddy was fucking on. That's Diddy's woman. I guarantee y'all. Y'all keep watching. Y'all keep listening. Y'all stand by. It's going to come out real soon. Y'all remember y'all heard it from Bomb first and Reggie right first. But yeah, I'm just saying shout out to the BT Awards. It was last night. Thought it was, it was cool. I kind of liked it. You know, I'm, I'm not into the, the young rappers. I love what Usher did. Usher, Usher, man. Tell you, Usher, Chris Brown, or Kelly. But I know, you know, our mamas and everybody love Charlie Wilson. And uh, who's gonna be, man, he gonna be at Essence of this war in New, in New Orleans, him and Usher. Man, if I was right, I still would be in New Orleans this weekend coming up. Cause him, and then they doing a tribute to uh, Frankie Beverly. Man, that's gonna be a hell of a concert for us people over 50. Y'all didn't hear about it. Those of y'all in New, New Orleans area, y'all should try to go and see that, that concert this weekend. But I'm so disappointed in how these rappers and these young these young dudes look now with these skinny jeans wear. <laughs> it's a different era, boy. It's a different era. And um, y'all lucky. Unable to hold back any longer, 
Diddy's frustration boiled over. What started as quiet discontent quickly escalated into a full-blown confrontation. If a bit, if a bear shit in the woods, does it make a smell? Um. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I could kind of see it. I could see it. I could see it. And, and it's like, before the internet and all this shit existed, you see what I'm saying? When, you in, when you're in the industry and all that, you be hearing shit about certain people, B. You know what I mean? I've been hearing shit about this dude. You know what I mean? Long time ago. Long, 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 long time ago. So the fact that this is all coming, you know, it's almost surprising that he was able to maneuver this long, to be honest. You know what I mean? I was there at City College and all that with the basketball game where people died. A girl that I know passed away. Rest in peace, Sonia Williams. Um, and I didn't think he was gonna be able to come bounce back from that. I was like, oh, this is done, he's done. And he just laid low for a little while. Came back stronger than ever after that. It was crazy. Oh, I Peter her, man. I had no idea that you knew someone that got killed in that situation, yeah. man. Yeah, my man Sonny's sister, man. She went to school with us in Nurishell. Matter of fact, she was Father MC's girlfriend at the time. Yeah, I know I always interview, you know, Gene Deal. And he's very adamant that, you know, Diddy is the reason why, you know, all the people got killed, you know, but from your point of view, do you blame Diddy? Yes, I, bl I blame greed on it. You know what I mean? I feel like they didn't want a bunch of people to get in for free. So they closed the doors in a certain way. The, cl the doors, I think, had to be pushed out or something like that. And they pulled them back in towards it. So like people got crushed against the doors trying to get in this little space. And you know what I mean? At that point, when you saw shit was crazy, y'all should have just said the money and just let motherfuckers in. But no, y'all motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Y'all want to squeeze the eagle, squeeze a quarter to the eagle screen. You know what I mean? And that's that bullshit. The once unshakable mogul was now visibly rattled. Word of Diddy's reaction began to leak out, and the public was quick to pick up on the drama. The media swarmed, eager to uncover every detail, as Diddy's image started to show cracks. You personally, do you think Diddy can bounce back from what he's going through right now? I mean, I feel like in the black community, it's probably a wrap, just for the simple fact that motherfuckers are saying no diddy like the fact that you are like a tagline like people have replaced pause and no homo and all that with no diddy i really don't see how you can come back from that in the black community now in a white community he might could come back from shit. you see what i'm saying like you know they still love uh you know Roman Polanski and all the, all the who, who was the dude that was like the pedophile? He was a, a, a movie director. I think it's Roman Polanski, if I'm not mistaken. There was this film director who was fucking like a, with like a 13 year old girls and shit like that. And I don't know, somebody died and all that. And he went to another country. But they still fuck with this dude, like in Hollywood and shit, like, you know what I mean? And he's a fucking exile murderer type of dude, like, you know what I mean? And they still, I think they honored him at something, you know what I mean? Um, so, I think Puffy is their guy, so they might still allow him to make money in certain circles or whatever the case may be, but as far as us, I think he's always going to be the butt of a joke. You know, like I saw... <laughs> like everything that's like... Everything that's like gay is... They're putting it on him now. Like I saw a video and a dude had like... Dry shaving cream or something on the side of his face. And the nigga said, 
You look like you just came from a Diddy party. Like. <laughs> like, how do you bounce back off of that? Like, I don't see, I don't think you can. Like, you know what I mean? But if he does, and I don't see how, but we live in a crazy world. We live in a crazy world. Um, some people say he might, if he was just to come out and be like, you know what, I am gay and da 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 da, that might be one of his saving graces because now that community will embrace him and, and, and bring him in. You know what I mean? 